Okay, welcome, welcome to how to stand out in this oversaturated market. And I have to say, I've had my license for 17 years. It's always been oversaturated. I do want to also point out that the last crash, which was the only crash that I lived through as a realtor, was 06, 07, 08 timeframe, which this is not setting itself up for. So please understand the market is always shifting. Okay, this is no different. Um, but when that happened in my market, we lost over a third of the realtors. Okay, we lost over a third of the realtors. And so I say good riddance. You are not among them, right? Because you are here to learn how to stand out. And so I want to share with you something really quickly. Uh, I had a client, a one-on-one -on -one client, um, came to me this time last year, Elisa. And um, she um, was attractive. She was doing well, making six figures. But she suffered with um, so much fear around showing up. And um, she hid behind, I don't even know what the name of the service was, but it was the, the service where, um, you know, you send them your pictures and then they insert your pictures in with their verbiage, okay? And it would, and I'm going to talk more about this as we go through, but um, it wasn't landing for her, meaning she wasn't growing her audience. She wasn't getting deals from from what she was putting out there, from her messaging. And the reason is because it wasn't her messaging. You can slap your picture, ladies, on someone else's thoughts, someone else's message. It's not going to land because you need to uh, like commit to being vulnerable. You need to commit to being vulnerable. And I wanna encourage you right now because for this 45 minutes to an hour, I'm your coach. So I know some of you are my clients, some of you aren't, but for this time, I am your coach. So I am sharing with you what I know to be true, both from my experience as a realtor, successful realtor with a team that I sold for well over six figures, um, and as a coach. Vulnerability is safe. And when you decide to see being vulnerable as safe, you're going to skyrocket. That is going to be a game changer for you. I want you to consider this. We know that the number one people, the number one reason people will choose a realtor is because they feel safe. They trust the person. When you trust someone, you feel safe with that person, do you not? And so if you are feeling a certain way about being vulnerable, that it's not safe, then you are putting out a facade. You're putting out a fakeness that people cannot be attracted to. Something is not quite right. So you're actually, number one, you are attracting what you are giving out. And if you are not being vulnerable, being who you are, like showing your personality and letting people see, hmm, what would it be like to work with her? What's she really like? That is holding you back, ladies. So you have to be brave. And we're going to get started now in what I formally wrote, but I do want to say one more thing. And that is that um, in, order to, in order to stand out, you have to be brave to come up with your own narrative, come up with the, your own way that you see your market, living in your market, buying and selling in your market, right? It's your narrative. How do you see it, right? I don't buy into your truth is your truth and her truth is her truth and my truth is my truth. I believe there is truth. And I know that in business and entrepreneurialism, there is truth. And the truth is, is that you have to be vulnerable. When you are vulnerable, when you allow yourself to believe that vulnerability is safe and you trust yourself, and just wait till you hear how I'm going to encourage you to do that today. That is when it will all change for you. So you're in the right place. All right. So I want to start by saying you're a diamond. And if you followed me for any length of time, you know where I'm going with this, but it bears repeating. Ladies, I need to repeat this. You are a diamond, rare and exceptional. And as you are watching me now, 
you may think I've got, I do nothing differently than any other realtor. I offer nothing of value that other realtors don't offer. I don't even know what my thing is. I, I'm just, how does Jan say I'm rare and exceptional? Well, because God made every person different, right? I was 5'11", now I'm probably 5'10", I'm shrinking, you know. Um, some people are 4'11". Some people have green eyes, brown eyes, blue eyes, big nose, small nose, big ears, straight teeth, crooked teeth, mine are crooked, which people point out to me on Instagram, by the way. But you are rare and exceptional. And I want to talk to you a little more about why I chose the diamond as my kind of um, standing point or foundation for you, okay? A diamond is not available at the checkout counter at Walmart, okay? It's under glass, under lock and key. It's protected because it's seen as valuable. And so ladies, today, before we go, um, before we're done, I hope that I give you ways that you can dig into your value and really embrace and see and believe that your service is valuable, okay? So um, diamonds are valuable because of the emotion they bring up, right? Um, when someone, you know, asks you to marry, when you got engaged, someone gave you a diamond, you know, wouldn't that be a nice diamond? Um, and, you know, we usually cry. And a lot of it is emotion of love. Don't get me wrong, but it's also looking at the diamond, okay? Who are we kidding, right? So there are, le uh, there are um, ways to evaluate diamonds, right? There are gemologists, jewelry appraisers. And um, I want you to understand that even though your market is oversaturated, so is mine, so is everyone's. I don't care where you live, big, big town or small town, okay? You have value and you are needed. You are needed. If you don't feel like you're needed, Write down on the piece of paper that is you have in front of you, I am needed. There are people in your market right now who would have the very best experience with you, not with Charlie, who has a team of 100, not with Susie, who has a team of 10, you, okay? Now, diamonds are perceived as valuable because of four different things. Cut clarity, what well, cut clarity, the size of the diamond, and then the color, okay? So the cut is what gives it its sparkle, right? How much does the, the, the how well was the cut made, right? And, and there's, a, there's an actual guide. There's a, a guide, like a chart, like a, um, like a, a chart in science with, um, with the different things. There, there's an actual chart that gemologists use that, that will say, okay, here's the sparkle, here's the cut, here's the clarity, the depth, the beauty, okay? And I want you to think, what if, what if there was a chart for valuing realtors? Gosh, I think I'm going to come up with it. I am. I'm going to come up with it because I think it's so freaking amazing. Okay. Because not all realtors give the same value to their clients. Would you agree? Not all realtors are as valuable as the other. Right. And I want to say right now that the ones who are making like super, super money and possibly the top 10 in your market does not mean they're the most valuable. It just means that they made lots of offers and showed up a lot. Because the second truth I want you to write down, ladies, is that if you show up more, so I would do it up arrow, up arrow, show up. The more you show up, the more people will see you and the more deals you'll have, more closings, more commissions. Very simple. I love math. When I was in high school and college, I hated math. Now, as an entrepreneur, I love math. Okay, so let's go back to this chart. What would you think would be included as the most important in valuating, in valuation of realtors? So I came up with four, and I want you to tell me if you agree. All right. Number one, trust. We know this because it's on every annual survey of the National Association of Realtors. So trust is number one. Okay. Number two, excellent communication. Because what do they say? Oh, you know, realtors never get back to you once they get the listing or, or once we go under contract, right? So trust, excellent communication. Next is competence. 
knowledge, expertise, those three go together. What is your level of competence? What are your, is your level of knowledge and expertise? If I ask you what the stats are showing, how your business, not your business, but how your market is trending, whether that's a zip code, a county, a neighborhood, would you be able to tell me that? Because I did when I was a realtor, okay? You need to be competent. You need to be all in. So competence, knowledge, expertise. And this is a time, ladies, in this call to be honest with yourself. Okay, because when when you're aware with honesty, then from that place, you can direct yourself, you know, to move forward. Okay, the fourth one, possibly the most important, a simple proven process, i.e., i.e., um, sorry, I just got a text. Uh, sorry about that. A simple proven process, i.e., your customer experience with you. Do you wing it? And I don't mean like the little checklist. Oh, you know, I did this. No, you need to be proactive. You want more deals? Cater to, love on, pour into your client experience. Because the greater your client experience, the greater your confidence, and then you show up more, and then you get more clients, and then you get more closings. So everything really hinges upon your proven process for your clients. Okay. So I, you know, I'm not going to, I'm going to assume you'll agree with me on those four. So let me ask you a question. I'm going to ask you these questions in the last five days. I want you to write that. Okay. The last five days since Monday, we're at Friday. Okay. Since Monday, how many times did you show up and share your trustworthiness? This could be at a networking event when you're playing tennis at the soccer game with the kids, in an email, in a post, in a story, going live? How many times in the last five days did you share your trustworthiness with a story? A story of how, you know, you really helped a client and demonstrated your trustworthiness. If it's a big fat zero, then say, I need to show up and share my trustworthiness. Because the National Association of Realtors says that's the number one reason. And by the way, another word for trust is safety. Think about your past clients who felt really cared for, really safe with you. Super important. Next, how many times in the last five days did you share an example of how you prioritize excellent communication or how you deliver excellent communication with your clients through success stories? Again, just sharing, you know, um, my, you know, I like you could say a story like um, like you're in your car on your on your way home from something and you say, you know, I just shared with my buyer the utility information and we're closing in three weeks. And she was so appreciative because she said last time she bought a house, she didn't even know who the utilities were. Because this family is moving into the state from another state and they're in the in the armed services. And so they're constantly going to new places. And to me, this was just nothing. This was like my, my five-star level of service. But she was so appreciative, right? You're sharing glimpses, ladies, into your client experience, demonstrating your excellent communication, which is part and parcel. Do you see how that works? Thirdly, in the last five days, have you shared, have you showed up and shared your competence, your knowledge, your narrative, your expertise? And I have to say, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I am a straight shooter. If you are posting like every Monday, this is the number of new listings, this is the number of homes under contract, da, 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 without a net, without a discussion about it, it's it's I'll say it's a C. But anybody can cut and paste numbers, right? I want you as my client to be a level above you say hmm how can i stand out when i'm not really sure what i do is any different than anybody else well then do something no one else is doing ding 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 i wish i had a bell maybe i'll get a bell so how about you really look at trends and then you speak to that demonstrating your knowledge your expertise okay and how many times 
in the last five days, did you show loving being a realtor? Did you like just demonstrate it? Like, oh my gosh, I just love closing. Or I'm recalling a closing that I had um, recently where dot, dot, dot. You just share a story. Ladies, if you want more deals, you want to stand out. You've got to evoke emotion, evoke emotion. Just write it and underline it. How can I evoke emotion? And we're going to go through it. We're nowhere near done. All right. How many times did you show up at a one-on-one -on -one or a networking event, a lead share, at the neighborhood pool, at the grocery store, anywhere, showing how great you care for your clients? You're getting the point, right? Your proven process for your buyer or seller. Ladies, we have to make it simple. We have everything against us, right? The narrative in the news, the media is, oh, the world's falling down in terms of the real estate market, right? And then we have the people who had piss poor performance from an agent who hates agents, who is all about FISBO, and they don't think that we're valuable. Well, maybe their agent didn't show them value. Maybe it's justified. And instead of complaining about it, how about we show value and we start now, excited to show the value, okay? We have to do a little extra. We don't have to do a lot extra, I have to say. My clients who are seeing huge transformation are making little tweaks and shifts, okay? All right, there's two parts, ladies, to differentiating yourself in an oversaturated market. Okay, two, to stand out from other realtors in your market. You want to share, show up sharing your value as a realtor. Okay, so write this down. How does, okay, these are the two that, that the rest of our time together is going to flow from. Okay, show up sharing your value as a realtor. Okay, and you want to show up more and you want to share you. Okay, so within that, you want to show up sharing your value. You want to show up more offering to help. Offering to help. You'll have more business to the degree that you show up. So that's why I asked you in the last five days, have you showed up? Where? Mm. How often? Right? And then... Sharing you, vulnerability. Remember, we if you were with me earlier, a couple of people just joined. Um, vulnerability, showing up, sharing your smiling face, whether you think it looks good or not, right? Sharing your smiling face, inspiring, evoking emotion, sharing your life, your thoughts, your experience helping people, your value, all right? If you're showing up is fueled by, oh, I need to. Oh, I'm supposed to. I should. I need a deal. I have to. If that's how you're showing up, that's why pfft, not working. Not working because, ladies, that is fueled by fear and doubt. Okay? Threat, like, oh, desperation right? It feels yucky and it's salesy. So I'm going to say that again. I'm going to give you the solution. If you're showing up is fueled by, okay, I have to show up. I need to show up. I have to, you know, all of that. That is very salesy. That's why you're feeling salesy. If you're feeling salesy, it's because you're salesy. If you're feeling salesy, hate to tell you it's your fault. Because instead of focusing on what value can I bring to my market and discounting yourself, thinking that I can never be as good as he, I can never be as good as she, I can never be as good as that team, whatever, you are shooting yourself in the foot because any action fueled by doubt falls flat, okay? But the secret, the solution is to choose to better fuel you're showing up, okay? And the fuel behind showing up is I need to rescue people. I need, and maybe rescue isn't the best word, but I need to help show up 
so that Susie finds me because I know my heart and I know my level of service. And if I don't show up offering to help over and over and over again, then George, who I've seen in the break room, I've seen the way he talks about his clients, okay, or Janie or Susie, whoever you think is a snake agent in your market, if they're showing up, they're getting deals and that's why, okay? And it's not just showing up and standing out on social media. It's showing up in leadership roles, in nonprofits, in different, in different, you know, locally showing up, being a leader, offering to help. Okay. So um, when you show up in service, keeping the value that you bring to other people, that allows you to be very hyper focused on what are my best clients thinking what are they wondering what are they fearing what's keeping them from buying what's keeping them from selling okay this is what your brain is thinking do you see the difference the first one is oh, i need to i should i i i i i i i no wonder you feel salesy all you do is think about yourself when you make that shift and say, Whoo, I'm not thinking about me. I'm not obsessing about me. I'm over here thinking about my clients, my future clients. And by the way, everybody is a potential client. There is no bad lead, none. Because eventually, 92% of people are going to buy or sell a house. And those eight people that will, net, will, will always rent their whole lives, they might know somebody that they could refer you to. I hold that belief. I held that belief. Hold that belief strong because that is fact. Okay. So I want you to understand there are no rules to standing out and showing up, or there's no rules to showing up. I, I want to do it the right way. Okay, ladies, when we want perfectionism, again, perfectionism, hustle. You can make six figures and six figures, but you make you make a million dollars in the hustle. Or you can make a million dollars with this plan in the value. And you can have off weekends. I, you know, I did it. Okay. So what you have to get in your brain is there are no rules. There is no need to, no have to. Instead, I want to. And you have to create the desire to show up so that you can help more people. So you say, many of you say, I came, became a realtor to help people. Did you really? How are you helping them? If you're on this call and you do not know how to differentiate yourself, that's the answer. Call yourself on the carpet. Call your, I'm sorry, I'm getting a call. I have to decline it. Call yourself on the carpet and say, okay, you said you wanted to help people. Let's dig in and help people and stop worrying about sales. Because ladies, when you focus on over-delivering and giving, giving, giving value, then you're going to have fans. You're going to have people that are lining up behind you that say, when I'm ready, she's my girl. And if she keeps inspiring me to sell, I might sell earlier. That's the belief you hold. That's from which, that's, that's the area from which you move forward, okay? You want to calm your people down. You want to give them an exemplary experience, right? And I always think about Ritz-Carlton. What's the difference really between a hotel room at Ritz-Carlton and Holiday Inn? More comfy bed? Maybe. Softer sheets? Yeah. Thicker towels? Maybe. It's the experience. So I want you to think about your last two clients. What was their experience with you? And take a real hard look and even just get a piece of paper out and put a, a, a line down the middle and say, okay, what did I do really well for them? 
I'm going to write it down. Whew. And you feel good when you're writing it. Whew, I did good. Oh my gosh. Yes. She said this. And, you know, go back and look at your emails with them when they were appreciative. And then on the other side, say, what can I do better? What can you do better? Like, oh, well, I did kind of forget to remind them to bring the cashier's check. I thought the lender was going to do that or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Or wire the money. Okay. Most realtors don't show up. That's why 87% leave the business because they're like, oh, what is this? I have to actually ask for the business. I have to actually say on my social media, media that I'm a realtor. Yeah be vulnerable. But a lot of times they don't show up because they don't want to bother someone. I don't want to bother anybody. I don't want to send, Jan says, send a weekly email. My gosh, I don't want to bother them. Well, if you think the weekly email is going to bother them, then you might be in the wrong business. Or let's be, stand up and be big girls and be like, okay, then I need to make it valuable so that I don't think I'm bothering them. Ladies, when I was a realtor and now as a coach, when I show up on stories or posts or in my emails, I never think I'm bothering someone ever because in fact, I pray before I send it that people will actually listen because I know it works, right? And so as you are thinking of sending out a weekly or twice monthly email and you're thinking, oh, I don't want to bother anybody. No. That is self-obsession. That's perfectionism. That's giving yourself the way out, giving yourself an excuse. And as your coach, I really want to share with you that this is the mindset stuff that is in your way of standing out. Okay. And I say this with all the love that I can muster because you're not bothered. If you think you're bothering them, you're bothering them. If you think you're salesy, you're salesy. Both stem from thinking about me. I, 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 right? So instead say they, 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 how can I pour into them? Oh my gosh, they'll definitely want to hear this, right? All right, right. If you don't show up, the sweet old lady whose husband is going to have a heart attack tonight She's going to go with the snake in your area because the snake shows up. Because the snake has been sending postcards to that neighborhood consistently. They've been showing up on social media and the widow's daughter sees them all the time. Okay. So in essence, if you don't show up, people are going to be hurt because you're not showing up. Have you ever thought of it that way? If you know that your service is valuable, that you really care, and that you have a proven process through which you take your clients that is enjoyable, is delightful for them, then you would show up. Man, you would show up, right? It's like if you had a cure for cancer. If you had a cure for cancer and you would tell three people, and all three said, no, thanks. Don't want it, not interested, maybe. And it could be, they just don't think, it, they think it's too good to be true or they don't know you or whatever reason they say no. If you truly knew that you had a cure for cancer, would you stop? No, you wouldn't stop. You'd be like, okay, I have to say this a different way. People aren't getting it. I have a cure for cancer. They're not getting it. So then you go to work thinking, how can I say it differently? Because I know that it works. Now move that over to your value. How can I share my value, my, my client's experience being so delightful, being so results-driven and simple and stress-free? The more you pour into that, you're going to scream it from the mountaintops and you will stand out. Okay. So you, your other's focused, you're, you're, you're showing up, caring, focused on with your proven process. All right. You step into being a leader. Whoa. 
Do you know a servant leader is the best kind of leader, ladies? A servant leader. And servant leaders do what? Lead through service. That's what you are. Hey, my clients who come to me with fear and doubt, and then they make the transition over to a leader focused on clients and their client experience, they double, triple their business. And because they stop doing the need to and the should to and all the, no the nonsense, the garbage that I can't believe brokers are still telling y'all to do. Um, they have less time. They have less work time. So it all, everything I'm sharing with you ladies is, is to your benefit. All right. I want you to understand that the career that you've chosen here as a realtor is one that has such an impact on people. Finding home, selling home, right? The legacies, the generational, you know, like the Thanksgiving and the memories and everything. You do that. There's nothing more important than that. Family. What does home represent? This is you. This is what you do. You get to do this. Man, have fun with it. It's freaking amazing. I think it's amazing. This is dream home stuff. Like I could picture um, a post or, or a, a video or whatever that, that would say dream home. Everybody thinks of their dream home. How about their dream home buying process? How about, I'm sorry, not pro, they don't care about process. How about their dream home buying um, experience? Do you want the dream home selling experience? Do you want the dream home buying experience? I got it. I got it. I offer it. Right? Do you realize how awesome you are? Do you realize how, how valuable you are? The impact. That's why my academy is called Unstoppable Income and Impact. Because they go together. It's what a wonderful thing. The impact. It's not like selling a sweater. I want you to take a moment to reflect on that. Home is safe. Home is love. Home is cozy. Home is family. Home is everything. Home is everything. Safe haven. So if you show up more, you attract more. So you write this down. If I show up more, so I would write show up with an up arrow, show up more, I would attract more, I would help more, and I would close more, and I would cash more checks. The base foundation of showing up to stand out is on the foundation of who you are and the experience that you give to your clients, period. Which brings me to the second part of differentiating yourself to stand out from others, sharing you, sharing you, being vulnerable, okay? So many of you, my, maybe not on this call, but so many of the realtors that, you know, are in, she's an unstoppable agent or people that come to me for coaching. Um, I'm just amazed that they are a secret agent. They are hidden. And if you go to the, she's an unstoppable agent, Facebook group, go to guide one. And that is where you'll see my training on the four levels of realtors, hidden, distracted, attractive CEO. My goal is to have 100 ladies cross over 100,000 by the end of the year or multiple hundreds of thousands by the end of the year. And I am close. It's pretty amazing. Okay, zero in, zero in. Being vulnerable when I can teach you how to let it go, that it is safe. Like I told you earlier, if you're with me, um, I have some new people that just jumped on too, um, that on Instagram, like I never had braces. On Instagram, you don't know how many people, some women, but mostly men say, get braces, chick, like get braces. Whatever. I know what my teeth look like, right? But the world is negative. And it's on purpose that it's negative, okay? So as we are vulnerable and we show up vulnerable, 
we free other people to show up vulnerably. And we demonstrate our own trust in ourselves and safety in ourselves as we are vulnerable. That translates from somebody else saying, wow, she's really, she's really confident. But the confidence comes from you being vulnerable, trusting yourself, and not allowing any of the negativity to mean anything about you. Fine. Bunch of people think I need, um, uh, you know, braces. Great. Not getting it. That's fine. Okay. So the number one thing that buyers and sellers look for is trust and trust and safety in choosing an agent. So you want to stand out, not just because you want to stand out, you want to stand out so that more people know about you. And when they're ready, they're going to hire you for their buyer and seller. Okay. And then, and, 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 and investing, right? So ladies, we're getting what we're putting out. So if you aren't happy with your income slash the level of, you know, number of people and closings that you're having, then you've got to look at the mirror and say, how vulnerable have I been? Okay. It's just like earlier, I was sharing with you one of my clients who, who used some service and she would just have to give them pictures. Um, and I'm actually going to, um, um, somewhere in here, I'm going to read some of those because um, it's freaking crazy. I, I want to try to find it now. Um, hold on, bear with me. I want to try to find it. All right, well, I can't. Um, oh, here it is. If you're feeling uncertain in the market, the best thing to do is talk to a pro. How about talk to me? Okay, talk to, talk to a pro. Hey, I don't want to be pushy. You might not want to talk to me. Talk to a real estate professional. Duh, I'm sorry. She, that, that fell flat. It's got to be, talk to me. Next one, how to get your home on the market. Hire an agent who knows your neighborhood. I don't know about you, but when I was an agent, I didn't know every neighborhood. I made it my business to know the ones that turned over, but I didn't know every neighborhood. So does that make sense? How to get your home on the market. Hire an agent who knows your neighborhood. What if you've never sold in that neighborhood? Now you just shot yourself in the foot. Number one. Number two, why would you say hire an agent? Hire me. I know your neighborhood. Okay. <laughs> hire me. I'd love to be your chosen agent. I know the neighborhood. I know your neighborhood. Because guess what? If you don't know it, you got the MLS access and the tax records and you can know it. Okay. Last one. Re um, when you're thinking about putting your home on the market, call in your realtor to preview it before it gets listed. What? She was paying for this. She was paying for this. I'm like, no, you say, call me, bring me in. Because most people want to wait until they think their house is ready. And most people spend money they didn't have to spend. Do you see where I'm going with this, ladies? The answer is not to hire some, some company to do your showing up for you, okay? That's why within the academy, we're doing messaging month because I'm demonstrating to my clients in the academy and my one-on-one -on -one clients that messaging, we're just making it out to be something that it's not. You know stuff, share it, be vulnerable. All right. Um, clients who feel safe with you, trust you. Okay. If you want more yeses, you have to trust yourself. Okay. If you're closed off with a picture of a dog and then a picture of God knows what in your cover photo, and I'm just being real. That's why you're not standing out because most agents are like that. They don't want to be vulnerable. I've had more and more clients this year say, I think I'm going to open up a new Instagram and that's going to be my business Instagram or a new Facebook. And that's just going to be my business Facebook. And I just want to encourage you that you can change the audience. If you're going to post about your kids, I get it. 
I get it. This world is full of crazy freaking people, right? But for the most part, you want people to kind of see you. Like if you know me, um, I got grandkids I love and adore. I have two kids who are realtors who are doing really well. One's 22 and one's 30. The 30-year-old has four kids. The, the 22-year-old's getting married in 73 days. Like I, I bring you into my life. You know, I love to ride bikes. My backyard is a golf course. Uh, you know, I don't know. I share things with you. I'm vulnerable. And if it turns people off, that's okay, right? Because I'm hoping the people that stick around like me, and eventually they're going to hire me. And if they don't, God will repay me because I'm giving value, like I'm giving value to you right now. You create what you want in your own life first. Okay. You create your clients. Any deal you've ever closed, it's never a fluke, ladies. You created it. So, to the degree you trust yourself and you show up feeling safe, you're going to attract others. You want to attract more people, show up more, trust yourself more, be vulnerable more. Okay. It's all easy to do on that foundation of your proven client experience with you buying, selling, investing. You're always thinking about them. Like write that down. Thinking always, underline, bold, always about them. Because I have a hunch that you've been thinking about you. Tony Robbins said, and I'm not some huge fan, but he did get this right when he said um, the most... um, not, uh, the most miserable people are those that are self self obsessed. The most miserable. So get your get your brain off yourself. Um, what are they wondering about the market? What are they worried about? What is causing them to hesitate listing? What is causing them to hesitate buying, moving up, moving down? What do they wish for? What's their dream to have a second home? Take time to slow down and write one page. Um, with these wonderings. Okay. So I would have one page with each of these at the top. What are they worried about the markets? But like overall, what are they worried about? A market shift? What does that mean? Right. Um, Inflation, like, I don't know, their houses, the house prices will, will drop, whatever. And then, you know, what are they, what are their apprehensions about buying? What are their apprehensions and fears about selling? What do they wish? Okay. And so you have those four things at the head of every one of those four pieces of paper. Okay. And like what I have that I'll just share that everybody loves is I have this peel and stick, peel and stick. Like this is my wall. This is peel and stick that I got at um, Staples. And so I, you know, and, and basically it's like a whiteboard that's across my whole, um, my whole wall. My whole wall there is it is is the whiteboard. Um, So you can do it there so that you can see it or on a piece of paper on four pieces of paper. But ladies, that will be your content. Because when you know what their fears are, what they're thinking about, what they want, then you can create your process, your client experience around that. You can create your content. I hate that word, but I don't know what else to call it. Um, Because it sounds so impersonal content. Let me create some content. Yeah, you create content like I just read to you. It's going to fall flat. It's got to be you. It's got to be some bounce. It's got, and you don't have to be nuts like me, like, you know, loud and everything. Um, But it has to have a voice, right? It has to have your voice. You have to be fueling it with, oh, I got to get this news out because nobody else explains it this way. Have you ever heard a coach explain it the way that I'm explaining it? No, because I'm different right? You're different. You have a different way. The word delight comes to mind. I want you to give yourself a framework to delight, delight in giving the special attention to your audience as you share, to your clients who you're working with, 
delight in it, choose to delight in it. You delight giving it and they delight in receiving it. And as they delight in receiving it, they are going to be using you. They are becoming so freaking loyal to you, ladies, okay? You're up-leveling your business by up-leveling what you do for your clients. You're standing out with your own narrative, focused on them, um, talking about the value, focusing on serving, um, up-leveling your client experience. And you might even say, I'm the Ritz-Carlton realtor. Why not? Why not? And you say, oh, I'm scared. My service might not be as good as somebody else's. Guess what? And you don't have to do research. No, you don't have to do research and figure out what's, what does she offer and what does he offer? No, you know your clients. You reflect, like I said earlier, on what did you do great for your last couple of clients and what, let's just be honest, what could have I done better? Put it in a client experience diagram. I, we actually have that in the, in the academy. And then you're not recreating the wheel. You're actually knowing what you're doing and you are so, like everything is so simple. Remember how we went back to the diamond, the clarity? How clear are you right now? Are you getting clearer on this call? I'm sure. I'm sure if, if you're not doing a million other things that you are. So would, would you agree the world is chaotic right now? Yes. More scary. Yes. Would you agree that um, with the market shift and the billions and billions of our dollars that are be, being spent and printed, it's like, whoa, what's going on here? Yes. Would you agree that people feel isolated, on guard? Most people are fearful. And when you're fearful, you reflect in, right? That's part of anxiety. You, you reflect in and your world gets smaller, okay? So do you think that you would stand out if you showed up on purpose to counter the chaotic market shift, skies falling narrative? Absolutely, you would, okay? Um, do you think that you would stand out if you showed up with confidence with some conviction and competence about the market. Yeah. Do you think you'd stand out if you showed up with facts about the market shift versus, you know, the, the BS? Oh, the pricing, you know, everything slowed down. Houses aren't selling anymore. BS. Now they might not be in your market. In my market, they're flying. They're, they're still going. But whatever is going on in your market, you know it. You don't react, right? Hey, let me tell you something. In 06, 07, 08, when everybody, a third of, over a third of the people left the business, I was laughing all the way to the bank, ladies. I got my short sale designation. I learned everything about short sales. I dug in understanding foreclosures. I made friends with um, asset managers at banks. Like I went outside the scope. Meanwhile, other people at my office were like, oh, it's so Oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to get a job. Make this your job, right? If you have no plan B and you decide that there's no plan B, there's no plan B, there's no um, alternative plan, you're gonna make it work. And it's time to pull up my big girl panties like I did back in those years when, you know, Average days on market, 92, 87. Still made six figures, multiple six figures. And I did not ever, took six months to get my first closing. Never went a month without a, without a closing. My biggest month was like 85,000, I think, with multiple deals. I'm not saying it to brag. I'm saying to say that it all shifted for me when I took responsibility and, dig, and dug into my value. What do I bring to this market? And I'm going to tell you that, and I don't know how, how many of you are on here from my, my, my old market, but I'm going to tell you that there was a particular person there who, you know, made over a million dollars and he, uh, if I didn't want to say it was a he, but he, um, I heard, you know, things that he would say in the break room, like, you know, that weren't very nice. And it was, it was that when I came home and I told my husband, I said, Hey, Dan, I got it. I'm going to focus on really pouring into these people because the top agents in this market, 
They're laughing all the way to the bank. And they don't really have heart. Some of them did. Please don't misunderstand. Some didn't. So I used that, right? Before I had a team and I was going against teams, I would talk bad about, I didn't talk bad about teams. I found out why an individual agent was better than teams. Why is an individual agent better than teams? Because you're going to deal with me, myself, and I. You're not a number with me. The reason people have teams is to run people through like an assembly line, okay? Then when I became a team, I said, you know, the value of having me is that, yes, you're still only going to have me because I didn't believe in that, you know, switching off people like lenders do. I said, you're going to have me, but you also have the power behind me of my team, blah, blah, blah. You learn how to strategically, you know, communicate your value. Okay. What is your value? You evoke emotion. Evoking emotion can't be done with flat facts. No. And it can't be done by saying, call your agent when you're an agent. That just to me, I'd be like, well, I guess she doesn't really think that she's worthy because she didn't say call me. Right. But evoking emotion happens with your smiling face, with, with your pet, with your clients, with your clients' smiling faces, right? Your storytelling, people love stories. You want to evoke emotion, tell a story. When I posted last week about my 27th year of being smoke-free, I can't tell you how my Instagram blew up and my Facebook messages blew up. And my text, some people, my clients and all. It was, it was, it took me like 10 minutes to write it. I was just sharing what I was really thinking and it blew up. What could you share that other people would relate to? I have um, a client who is in the academy and she um, is alcohol free for, I think, two years now. Every time she talks about it, she wants to free other people. Of, of running to the bottle, you know, she was a busy agent, she still is. All right, so now you understand the importance of being front and center with storytelling, focusing on evoking emotion, sharing your high level of service, okay? Now, you believing that your service is rare and exceptional, you're a diamond, therefore your service is rare and exceptional, and you build on that belief, okay? Um, delighting, delighting in coming up with that and to communicate that. And it's that simple. What are you spending time doing? Okay. And I know this isn't, you know, this isn't regular Zoom. This is like webinar, webinar Zoom, but I want you to really think about what am I spending my time doing instead of this? Because this is what's going to make you money. This is what's going to have you excited to show up and stand out. And if you're poo pooing this, Ask yourself, why am I resisting this? What is it that I'm resisting here? Because that is the work that you need to do. You could have the most gorgeous website. You don't need a website. Here's, here's something new. You don't need a website to make 100,000, to make 250,000. You certainly don't need a business page on Facebook unless you want to pay for ads, but I teach people how to make money organically. But Knowing that your service is value, you're compelled, you're thrilled, you're just convicted to show up and share your up-leveled experience. Um, you save other people from the narrative that you don't believe in, that the sky is falling. You save them from their own fear, right? And I always say this, and we're almost done, ladies. Stick with me. We have like five minutes left. Um, when people would say to me, hey, um, my buyers decided they didn't want to buy now. They want to wait until it dies down in terms of competition. They don't like to be in competition. This summer, those same people wouldn't even be able to buy that which they could have bought last year. So that's one of the things I teach in the Academy too. It's like how to really know when to, you're not pushing them, but when to offer some other perspective because you're the expert. You offer the perspective of, hmm, I know what you mean, but what about the competition bothers you? You don't like losing. You want to win the first time. You think there's going to be a deal. 
because a lot of those clients that I talked to that shared that with me, um, you know, many of them took my advice and they closed and now their clients are thanking them. And when you're an exceptional agent, ladies, you know what you know, and you're going to offer a different viewpoint. And as a coach, I'm offering you that this is the way to stand out. This is the way to be excited to show up. You're showing up as a servant leader, like I said, okay? Um, all right, so what I am offering you, what I am offering you is, I'm gonna check the Q&A um, in a minute. So if you have questions, please pop them in there. But what I'm offering you is a once and done offer for the Academy. The next uh, time the Academy opens is September 19th. And the Academy promises that you'll make 100,000 out of the hustle, organic marketing. Or if you're already making hundreds of thousands, but you're like freaking hustled out, then you'll still make that money. But without the hustle, you're going to lose that. Because that is based on doubt. And I understand where that comes from. And we get rid of it. We minimize it. And then eventually gone. So what I decided to do was if you take action and hop in pre-enrollment into the academy by Monday at midnight, then I'm going to allow $500 a month times five months. So it's $2,500 to get in the program. That is an investment. That is a tax write-off. And the return on investment comes with your very first closing. Right. So it is it's, it's a no brainer. And I wanted to really make it even better, even easier for you to jump in. So I'm going to be emailing out a link. Actually, you can go to um, coachjancopeland.com slash unstoppable income and you will see, um, you know, one time offering until Monday at midnight, five hundred dollars a month for five months. Usually it's it's seven hundred dollars a month for four months. Well, so I add, you know, $300 because of the um, payment plan. Ladies, here's what I know. Here's what I know. If you're on this call, you need to stand out. If you need to stand out, it is foundational to really stepping into who you are becoming, to becoming that awesome CEO agent that you dream of becoming. And I know that it can happen because many others it has happened for them within the Unstoppable Income and Impact Academy. So that is what I'm offering you. You get first dibs because you're here with me today. So let me, um, and so I'm going to be emailing out the link. So I really encourage you to take advantage of that. Amy, I love you too. You're sweet. All right. Any other questions? I did have um, one question that was posted before. That was, hey, um, once I get another deal or two, then I'll jump into the academy. And here's what I want to offer you. Does that make sense logically? No. Because if you know that by jumping into the academy, you're going to get more deals, then does it make sense to think I have to wait until I have a deal? Because you're putting off your exceptionalism, you're putting off your ability to learn a new way. And I don't think that makes sense. So the ladies who are all in, who have been on the fence, this is your time. Monday at midnight, boop, this goes away. And then I'm going to be launching officially to fill up the next round of the Academy. And so it'll be $2,500 one pay or $700 times four, 2,800. Okay. All right, any other questions about what specifically I shared today? Oh, Deanna, you're so welcome. I'm excited. I hope you all join. I hope you all join. I just love it. It's a really fun community. I want to share with you really quickly um, two minutes because I actually have to go. Two minutes. We meet weekly on Wednesdays. Doesn't matter when, because guess what? If it's important to you, you're going to prioritize it. So we meet once a week for an hour and a half where you get, I coach my face off. And it's out of love at, at all times, of course. And so we meet there. You also have two other coaches within a private Facebook community. You also have a private member portal that's available 24 seven. 
that you can jump right into and get started with the modules. So it's mindset and strategic thinking, and it's not just, you know, oh, I am great. No, it's deep mindset work and strategic thinking. Then it's buyer boom, everything you need to be um, an exceptional buyer's agent. Then it's listing queen, everything you need to be an exceptional listing queen, even if you've never taken a listing before. Everything is there, very, very succinct, but detailed, okay? There's nothing in there that you don't need, but everything that you would need is there. And then it's um, the organic lead gen, which is how to attract more people to you organically without spending money. And by the way, with them coming to you, how would you like to have people coming to you versus you feeling like you have to go to them? Um, and then the fifth one, the fifth module is editables, which are your Canva editables so that you can have your, your um, everything you need for your listing presentation, your buyer consult, all your flyers, everything that postcards, everything that you need is in Canva editables your buyer's guide that you can give to your buyer prospects, seller's guide, give to your seller prospects. And then um, what was the other thing? It's lifetime access. And as I add new things to the academy, you get that at no charge because it's lifetime access. It's freaking crazy. The value is amazing. Um, I do want to say one other thing. Oh, and then there is a, um, a live Q&A uh, live Q&A we talked about. There is a Q&A button within the member portal and within the private Facebook group. And as you're going through the modules, if, if something is extremely confusing or you have any questions, you get immediate answers, okay? So there's two op opportunities for you to do that. Oh, you're so welcome, ladies, Monica, Jeanette. Anyway, I love you ladies. And I just, I just hope that you got, whether you jump in the academy or not, I hope you got huge, tremendous value from today. And um, take, I hope you took good notes because in the academy, they're going to get this re, this, this um, replay. I don't know if I'm going to send it out to everyone. I think about it. Anyway, love y'all. Talk to you soon. Oh, let me see this. No, we're good. All right. Talk to y'all later. Enjoy your day and your weekend. Bye.